What's up y'all? I want to welcome y'all back to AB Cooks and on the menu today is a boneless ribeye. Not just boneless ribeye, we're gonna smother this baby y'all. What y'all think? All right guys, on the menu today is a boneless ribeye steak, but we're gonna smother this baby. We're gonna make us a gravy with it. We're gonna, uh, I haven't decided if I wanted to do white rice with it or mashed potatoes. I'm leaning more towards mashed potatoes because beef goes well with mashed potatoes, but I'm still contemplating that. But what we have in front of us is about three pieces of boneless ribeye steak and we're going to start with a basic seasoning uh the only thing that we're going to add kind of different to this <clears throat> and i wouldn't say different but we're just going to add us worcestershire sauce worcestershire sauce goes well with beef so let's add us a little bit of that on there without making a mess as I tend to do. And we're just gonna massage this uh, Worcestershire, uh, now I'm thinking about it, yeah. Whenever I think about Worcestershire sauce and kind of put too much into thinking about saying it, I always get it confused and say it the wrong way. But what we're gonna do is massage this Worcestershire sauce into our ribeye steaks. We're gonna flip it over on the other side. Add some on this side. Massage it in, y'all. All right, once we have our Worcestershire sauce added to our steak, this is my new favorite, you all. The Kinder, uh, they call it the blend. It has everything pretty much that I use when I'm seasoning most of my meat. And it has salt, pepper, and garlic. So we're gonna add us a little bit of Kinder on there. And we wanna do the same on this side. Just massage it in, or the same thing that we did with our Worcestershire sauce. Just make sure you massage those uh, flavors or that seasoning in. And when we flip it over, we'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Also, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add us a little bit of onion powder on top too. And that's it guys with the seasoning. Like I say, make sure you massage your beef and make sure that uh, all of those flavors have been massaged in. We'll flip it over on the other side, do the same thing. Once we have our steak seasoned on both sides, we're gonna go in with a little bit of uh, all-purpose flour. Simple, you all. What you want to do is just make sure the flour is coated all over uh, this portion or this top side of your uh, ribeye steak, and then we're going to do the rest on the other side. But just make sure you have a light uh, coating the flour on it. If you need to add more, I may add more to this. If you need to add more, I add more, but we're just looking for a light coating on top. All right, ribeye steaks were lightly floured. Next step is to throw in a skillet, either using olive oil or vegetable oil. So that's our next step. But just wanted to show you how lightly I uh, floured our ribeye steak. 
Okay, we went ahead and added us a little bit of vegetable oil into our skillet. Our skillet should be nice and hot. We're gonna take these ribeye steaks that we went ahead and seasoned and floured. And I should have let it get a little hotter, but that's okay. I wanted to hear more of a sizzle. And basically what we want to do with these ribeye steaks, we're not trying to cook them to any type of degree at this point. We just want to kind of get a nice brown on them. So what we'll do is until we get our brown, we'll uh, flip it over. So that's basically what we're doing. We're trying to get a nice color on them. We're not necessarily, not necessarily trying to cook these babies. All right, ribeyes have been on for about four minutes, maybe four to five minutes. We're gonna go ahead and flip these babies. Nice color, nice crust. That's what we're looking for. Perfect. That's what you want your ribeyes to look like when you flip them over. We're gonna go ahead and let them kind of do the same thing on the uh, on this side, and then we'll pull them off. Ribeye steaks have been on for about another five minutes. Should be done to our liking. What we're gonna do is kind of take them on a plate. and uh, put a paper towel so they can kind of drain off. We're also gonna go in with a little bit more of uh, vegetable oil. And what we have is uh, bell peppers, onions, and we chopped us up some, uh, some uh, mushrooms. not worry about that at the bottom we're not concerned about that that's going to come up once we deglaze at this point we're just concerned about cooking our veggies we're going to let them kind of saute a little bit uh, for a little bit uh, I say about maybe two minutes and then we're going to add my favorite type of uh, flavor that I love adding to my food, we're gonna add us a little bit of minced garlic. But for about two minutes, let's let these babies saute. Let's go in with our garlic. I'm gonna add us a little bit of uh, minced garlic into here. This should be enough. And also the uh, water from the uh, mushrooms, the water from the onions, the bell peppers, kind of deglazes this pan a little bit. But we're not concerned about this. That's flavor right there. That's what we want. So for about another minute, because we don't want our garlic to burn, We'll go ahead and let our garlic cook in and marry uh, in with our uh, with our uh, onions, bell peppers, and our uh, mushrooms. After about a minute, with our garlic being added in, I'm gonna take us a little bit of butter. Just want our butter to melt. That's what we're looking for. Go 
gonna remove our onions, bell peppers, and mushrooms off. Should have probably put this on a paper towel, but I mean, not a big deal. What we want to do is leave a few of our onions, mushrooms, and everything in there. It's not a big deal that everything is taken out. I'm going to go in with us some beef. No, I'm sorry, you all. Got to add my flour first. Got to make our gravy. But what we may want to do is we may want to go in with a little bit more vegetable oil so we can kind of get our flour to cook a little bit. So we're going to go in with about maybe two and a half tablespoons of flour. This is creating our roux for the beginning stages of our gravy. And what you want to do is it just depends on how you want your gravy, the color of your gravy to be. You kind of want to make this like the beginning stages of uh, your gravy. So if you want it dark, then you got to cook it longer. If you want it to be this color, then you kind of got to stop it at this point. But we kind of want our gravy to be a little bit more uh, darker. So we'll continue to let this cook down. You also want to turn your heat down a little bit. I've had everything on medium. And we want us a... Uh, a decent like a uh, almond color of a gravy on this so we're gonna let this cook down and then we'll come back when we get it to the like okay that we, we have want. our roux to a nice almond color this is what we're looking for gonna go on with a little bit of beef broth And I usually do half and half beef broth, half and half hot water. And now at this point, we kind of want to deglaze our pan. That's pulling up all of those burnt pieces all of that uh, flavor, it really is flavor, you all. It's pulling up all of that. It's almost like the way we do our uh, smothered chicken, smothered pork chops. The same scenario that we're using in this. All right, before we bring things back to a boil, we just want to make sure we have our flavors. We don't want to over salt things at this point because we're adding our steak back into it and it is salted to a certain degree. So we're going to go in with us a little bit of black pepper. We can always go back in and salt things, but you can't take away salt. Add us a little bit of salt to this. Add us some fresh parsley into this as well. And 
And as you can kind of see, our gravy is forming a little bit. Just has to cook. Continue to let things cook till we get back to a nice, decent boil. We don't want our gravy to kind of start forming at this point. We want our meat to be in there with our gravy. So we'll, once we start kind of seeing a boil, we'll add our meat back Got in. us a decent boil. Gonna take our, uh, I don't know why I wanna say pork chops, but we're gonna take our ribeye steaks. Add them back in. Almost burn my hand, y'all. We're also gonna take our onions, mushrooms, and all of that good stuff that we sauteed earlier and add it in as well. It's already kind of thickening up on us. So, perfect. Also, if it gets too thick for you, because Remember, we coated our ribeye steaks with flour. If it gets too thick for you, you can always add more beef broth to it or add more water to it. Oops, I had a spillover, y'all. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna cover this baby because it wouldn't be smothered if you didn't cover it. And let things, kind of turn things down between medium and low and just kind of let things smother down. Ribeye steaks have been on for about 10 minutes. Just gonna go ahead and check them. Also, what you wanna do at this point too, is you want to check for uh, seasoning on them if uh, you got a nice flavor or salt to them. We're going to go in with a little bit of uh, seasoning salt. We're not going to add them directly on top of our ribeyes. It's going to kind of find pockets. Doesn't need, doesn't need much. Another thing that we're gonna do as well, gonna add us a little bit more Worcestershire sauce into it. That's also gonna add a little bit more flavor, not necessarily salt, but it's gonna make it a little more richer. What we'll do, cover back, cook low between medium and low, and uh, continue to let things cook. Let's go ahead and check on our ribeye steaks. They have been on for about maybe 30 minutes or maybe 45. And as you can see, the meat is kind of giving in, you know, it's you know, it's being beat down. As you can see, lazy meat. That means that it's tender. So what we'll do is go ahead and cover, because there's also after cooking, turn the eye off, and then we'll plate. Okay guys, we went ahead and made us some buttery mashed potatoes for our ribeye steaks. I thought that was the perfect pair for it. Uh, I may cook a little side of rice because I love rice and rice is a little bit more healthier 
cooked in uh, mashed potatoes. We've also cooked us some um, uh, broccoli and cheese with cauliflower. And uh, we got us some cabbage, cornbread. And this is what we're pairing our meal with. What we're gonna go ahead and plate Our ribeye steak. Should be very tender. Uh, shouldn't be stiff, shouldn't be tough. Again, easy meal, simple. Uh, all you're doing, the hardest part about this is uh, creating a gravy to it. Uh, that's probably the most difficult part about this recipe. Other than that, you're just kind of letting things smother down like you would do your chicken, your pork chops. And uh, again, easy, simple meal. Appreciate you for tuning in. Like, share, and subscribe.